you that have come out, our remnant that has come out on January 1st, and uh, I know there's some people that had reasons they couldn't be here, but I thank God for you. And uh, we're going to start the year off right and are starting the year off right, worshiping Him together. Let's uh, stand to our feet, and I'm going to bring you a, a short message from the Word of God, and we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper together, communion together, to start this year off right. Let's hold our Bibles up, and let's declare this together. Heavenly Father, Thank you for the Bible. I believe the Bible. It's your word. It's the truth. It's a love letter from you to me. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. I thank God for the talent that he is br- and the gifts that he's bringing to this church. Aren't you all? This? Thank God. Amen. I really feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, how could we not feel the presence of the Holy Spirit after praise and worship and this special music that we've had from three gifted uh, worshipers and from the worship teams, just such a blessing. I could just stand here and enjoy this and then go on home, but we need to get into, we're going to get into the Word. Well, last uh, Sunday, at the close of the service, as I do sometimes, I ask if anyone had a word uh, from the Lord, word of encouragement or, or testimony, word from the Lord. And uh, Shar and I, at the exact same time, got the same words from the Holy Spirit, which were dawn of a new day. And so I've been uh, meditating on that dawn of a new day to bring this message to you this morning. And I went into uh, the scriptures. And first, let's turn to Psalm 46 5. And I do believe that. Uh, This is the dawn of a new day for us uh, as a church, uh, for our families, for our nation. And I think we need to be looking for some wonderful things to happen uh, beginning today. Amen? Amen. And the rest of this year. Psalm 46, I'm going to start in verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, see law, pause and think about that. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy uh, place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Amen. So we're talking about the dawn of a new day. Now, these scriptures apply to the nation of Israel, but they also apply to us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, there's a river whose streams make glad. I'm getting a little ringing uh, here, so if you could turn it down just a little bit. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Paul said, no, you're not. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so thank God for the river, the Holy Spirit, that brings joy and gladness to us. The Bible in talking about Jesus said he was anointed with the oil of gladness. And so he brings that same gladness to our hearts. And I think to have strength for this dawning of a new day that we need to have, we need that joy to be prevalent in our lives. Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And we need to be careful in this new day that we don't allow the enemy to steal our joy because if we allow him to steal our joy, we allow him to steal our strength. Well, you know, I don't know exactly what's ahead for our nation. I feel good about it. I feel good about what's ahead for us. I I can't stand up here and prophetically, I haven't heard from the Lord whether we're going to have a period of boom or whether we're going to have a recession or what the economy is going to be like, although I feel good about that as well. But I know this, that uh, He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is our present help if trouble does come. And we will not fear. Uh, Amen. And I think that if with this uh, 
theme, this dawn of a new day, we may need to make a decision that we're not going to be afraid of anything. We're not going to be fearful of anything, but we're going to know that the Lord, He is with us, and if God is for you, who can be against you? And we need to remember this river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the Holy Spirit, and invite the Holy Spirit to be prevalent in our lives every day of our lives and to be led by the Holy Spirit. And he says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. And I believe that this morning we're at the break of a new dawn uh, for our nation, for our families, for our church, for this church, for the body of Christ in our nation and all over the world. We're in the dawn of a new day. Now turn with me to Psalm 57, verse 8. I'm going to start reading actually in verse 7. My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. Awake my glory, awake lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. Well, I thank God as I read that, I thought about how God has given us a, a world vision. And uh, we support ministries not only locally, but uh, many ministries in different countries, in uh, India, in uh, Mexico, uh, on the, in the continent of Africa, Botswana, uh, in, in uh, uh, Honduras, uh, Haiti, uh, Peru, and I could go on and on, just many different nations all over this world. Plus, I am so pleased that it seems like we're getting more involved in helping children and helping orphans. Not only the uh, Samaritan's Purse with the gifts to the children, but uh, Korolov in Haiti, Honduras, uh, India, and other countries. They're expanding at a very rapid uh, rate, reaching out to orphans. We uh, support America World Adoption, which uh, finds forever families for orphans in uh, many different countries of the world. We have two uh, grandchildren that came to us through America World Adoption, uh, one from China and one from Ethiopia. So I thank God for that ministry and uh, for Compassion International. And uh, we uh, support children in uh, Haiti and in India through them. Also, Mahana Dan Fellowship is very much involved. They have an orphanage and part of our funds that we send there goes to help orphans in India through that ministry as well, Botswana, with their baby house, they rescue abandoned children there in Botswana. So I just thank God he keeps opening more and more doors to this church to reach out to children. And thank God for, for uh, Shirley and Tommy and uh, really bringing Samaritans, expanding Samaritans' poor, purse. And I believe God's given her a word. We're going to see a, tr a multiplication again this year. And also with the uh, Humble Police Department, we gave many... Uh, toys to them to help them to reach out to the community and develop a good relationship between the, between the police and the uh, people in our community, especially those that are in need. So uh, praise God for that. He says, I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. So uh, we are in perfect position for these verses to be real in our lives, in this church. He says, awake my glory, awake lute and harp, I will awaken the dawn. But before that, he said, my heart is steadfast, O oh God, my heart is steadfast, I will sing and give praise. And if we want to see this dawn of a new day really just opening up and, and manifesting in our lives, we need to be determined here on this first day of the year that we're going to praise God more than ever before. We're going to worship God more than ever before. Amen. We're not only uh, in church, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling together. We're going to be determined to assemble together, worship God together, but have time every day where we just worship the Lord. I don't care if it's in the shower, in your car, or wherever you are. You know, we, we don't all sing like Anita and like Chris and like Gary, but listen, I, 
I believe God loves it when I sing. I try not to sing around other people. I, don't, I try not to disturb them much. I mean, I, I try to blend in with the singing here at the, the church. But I know that Jesus, somehow when I worship God, when he hears it, he likes it. And, and he, he loves it. And so God, will, God is pleased when we worship him and praise him not only with our singing, but when we acknowledge him and we're, we're bold and we t tell others about him and praise him in the presence of the world. That's so important. And I think that's something the church that he's calling us to do more than ever, to worship him and praise him in the presence of the world, to not be intimidated uh, by any kind of an antichrist spirit or worldly spirit, but just to stand up with a fresh a boldness in this dawn of a new day to worship him, uh, regardless of whether those around us want to hear us worshiping him, not only with our singing and with our praise, but also just acknowledging him and telling others about him and having an attitude of praising him whenever anything good happens in our lives, giving him the glory in front of the world whenever that opportunity arises. Amen. And, and not being bashful, but having the boldness of the Holy Spirit to be bold witnesses unto the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe this is the dawn of a new day for every one of us that he is going to anoint us with that Holy Ghost boldness to stand up for Jesus in the midst of a, 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 a world that in many places is trying to deny him and trying to remove him from public places and public forums and, uh, and so on and so forth, we're going to stand up uh, with greater boldness than ever before in this dawn of the new day to acknowledge Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Amen. And to give him glory. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. Praise God. Let's go to Isaiah uh, chapter 58 verse 10. And I'm going to start reading the, there through verse 11. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And he was talking uh, to the nation of Israel about the kind of fast that he likes. Is that if you do without something, take what you're doing without and give it to somebody else is what he was saying. Well, as I was reading this, I was thinking about the vision that he's given us as a church to find purpose in life through loving God and loving people. It fits these verses so beautifully. If, he says, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, so your light shall, sh shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noonday. And the Lord will guide you. Amen. He'll satisfy your soul. He'll strengthen your bones. You'll be like a watered garden. You know, I, I'm convinced of this. I, I do feel good about the future. But I, I'm convinced of this. If we were to go into uh, a recession or, or if things uh, from the world's view weren't so great, I believe God's going to bless his church and he's going to take care of his children if we'll just worship him and put him first and acknowledge him and, and reach out to others because that law of reciprocity you know, uh, it it's, it's operates throughout the Old and uh, New Testament. When I say reciprocity, that's a big word, but we're, that's a word for sowing and reaping. And so that law of sowing and reaping, it applies throughout the Old and New Testament. But he's anointed us with the Holy Spirit. All believers have the Holy Spirit in the New Covenant, and he's anointed us to, to sow. Amen. And so that grace that we talk about so much. It is unmerited favor. It is God's riches at Christ's expense, but it's also, the, according to the strong definition for that Greek word for grace in the New Testament, it 
It is the divine influence in the believer's heart and in the believer's life. And so we need to let that, we need to be determined in this dawn of a new day to let that grace work through us in a greater measure than ever before. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, you know, we, we know we're not saved by good works. Our good works can never save us. But we were created for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, 8, 10. Amen. Amen. So, you know, as we reach out, uh, extend our soul to the hungry, and we reach out with this vision that God has given us to find purpose in life through loving Him and loving people, I believe we're going to see this dawn of a new day and these promises that come with the dawn of a new day manifesting uh, in our nation. If the church will stand up, we'll see it in our nation. I believe we'll see it uh, in our own lives. We'll see it in our local churches, and we'll see it in our families. And he says, those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. We've seen a lot of destruction. Uh, I'm really saddened by the destruction that I've seen happen in this nation during my lifetime. Uh, particularly with, uh, we've had some good things happen, but we've also had some bad things happen. And one of the bad things that happened was Roe v. Wade, that decision, uh, which uh, legalized abortion, and we've seen as many as 60 million babies aborted since Roe uh, v. Wade. That's destruction that has happened on our watch. That, that's waste places. Well, I believe that we can see that reversed as a nation if we'll continue to pray and stand up for life and stand up for what is right as believers and uh, uh, not allow our voices to be silenced, not allow ourselves to be intimidated, but stand up for the right for life, the rights of the unborn. Amen. And, you know, he talks about other uh, waste places. We've seen our educational system here in America deteriorate. We've seen this ungodly, atheistic uh, uh, a lie called evolution, for example, uh, creep into our science classes in our schools. And it's not a science at all. It's a lie from the devil that was a... a, a perpetuated by uh, atheists. But I, I believe we're going to see the day where uh, creation is taught in all our public schools again, and the Bible is back in our public schools, and, and prayer, and uh, the Ten Commandments on the wall, and things like that, you know, uh, where they hand out the rulers that have the golden rule on it, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. You know, I, I, we've got a lot of waste places, is what I'm saying, uh, in our nation right now. We see in our nation has become divided uh, by culture and by race more so than ever. I, that's another waste place. We need a healing. We need our nation to be brought back together. But it'll only happen if the church answers to this dawn of a new day and says, we're here. We're here to rebuild the waste places. Amen. Amen. Not only that, all of this has impacted our families. When every one of us, when we look uh, at our families, even if it's not our immediate family, our extended families, we, we, have, uh, we can see destruction in the lives of members of our families because of what's happened here in our nation. But I believe this is the dawn of a new day and the years that the, uh, God, God will restore the years that the canker worm ate. And you know, these, these uh, uh, years of destruction that we may see operating in some of our relatives and in some of our family members. I believe this is the dawn of a new day where if we'll believe and stand up not only with the truth but the truth married to love with, with uh, mercy and with compassion uh, married to the truth, we're going to see those waste places rebuilt in our families. We're going to see generations gen uh, where we've seen generation after generation of curses, we're going to draw that line and see uh, see those curses end and the blessings of Jesus operating and flowing into our family members in Jesus' name. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You know, we've seen, we're in a day where we're seeing perverseness paraded on our streets and things like this. That, that's waste places. 
you know, we, we need a reversal of this. But I believe we're in the dawn of a new day where people are going to stand up for what is right and stand up for the Word of God and uh, 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 stand on the Word of God as the foundation of our lives, the foundation of our families, and the foundation for the moral standard that we believe in as Christians. And I believe that we're going to be able to influence the rest of this nation in a greater way than ever before. Can you shout hallelujah? Praise God. Amen. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we know that means that Jesus is doing the same uh, miracles and works today that he did uh, before, and he's going to be doing it in the future. But you know, it also means something else when I think about that. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm telling you, he created time. Amen. <laughs> he created time. And if we'll believe in him and put our faith in him, he's not only operating in our present, he's already in our future operating in our futures, but not only that, he can go back into the past and restore the waste places. Amen. Restore the years that the canker worm ate. Jesus can do that if we'll put our faith in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Amen. Well, uh, I, I want to share this, uh, that Proverbs 27, 20, 27. Let's go to that chapter, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. We're talking about the dawning of a new day. We need to let this new day dawn in our hearts. And we need to uh, allow the Holy Spirit to search our hearts and illuminate and show anything to us that's not pleasing to him. We're going to be partaking of the Lord's Supper together here in a little bit. And we need to pray that he will illuminate anything, bring to light anything in our lives that we need to take to the cross in repentance and surrender to him. Amen. Glory to God. I believe he'll do that if we'll ask him. And I believe we need to be willing for him to show us things that we may not have been aware of before. Amen. That's, that's the exciting thing. The Holy Spirit can show us things that he may not have shown us before that we need to allow him to change in our lives because the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord searching all the inner depths of his heart. So we need to be willing to do that. You know, how many of you have gotten up in the middle of the night? I, I try to keep a pathway clear. You know, when I get up, if I need to go to the restroom or whatever. I try to keep a pathway clear where I'm in any area I might walk in. But how many of you have ever left something in the pathway that you might be walking in? And I have a little uh, light we plug in, but sometimes I'll, that same uh, light is what I uh, plug other things into sometimes. And I'll forget to plug that little night light back in. And Shara doesn't like a lot of light. It, light doesn't bother me when I'm sleeping much. She doesn't like bright light, so it's just a little dim light, you know, just to, where you can barely see. But how many of you have ever been in a situation where you got up in the middle of the night and it was dark, and maybe it was your shoes, and you normally have your shoes out of the way, but maybe you were in a hurry when you went to bed and left your shoes in the pathway that you normally walk in, and you get up and it's dark, and you walk and trip over that, and then you're doing a, a James Brown dance, you know, there in the middle of your bedroom where we just keep from falling on the floor, you know. Well, I, I know we've all had that happen to us, but we're talking about the dawning of a new day. Yeah. And I, I, as we partake of the Lord's Supper, I pray that all of us will, will be asking God to just show us any stumbling blocks that might be in our life to reveal that to us so that we can just take the ladle of the Holy Spirit and just dip it out of there, amen, remove it, amen, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. And then I wanted to share this uh, with you, and I, this came to uh, my attention. Uh, I've got a book called The Book of Mysteries by Jonathan Kahn, and he does uh, these uh, daily devotionals usually based on a Hebrew word, and 
I'm not going to go into all the Hebrew with you, but just the, the point of this one teaching of his on the scapegoat. And, he, and, and in Leviticus 16.10 is where you'll find it in the scriptures. But the uh, scapegoat, which was a type and foreshadow of Jesus, he would be sent out into the wilderness into an uninhabited place where no one dwells. And uh, that was a type and foreshadow of Jesus taking our sins to a place where no one dwells. And in Isaiah, interestingly, he says that the word in Isaiah 53, where it says in verse 8 he was ta talking about Jesus. Isaiah was clearly prophesying about the Messiah. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken. And that word cut off comes from the root word of, an, of uh, the same word that means uninhabit, an uninhabited place. And so Jesus, here we see uh, that he literally took our sins from us when we surrender to him, repent and surrender to him. He took our sins uh, as our scapegoat to an uninhabited place where no one dwells. And you know what that means? We, need, we don't need to dwell there. When, when we have repented, come to the Lord, uh, and born again, saved, and those, and if we made mistakes, let me ask you, is anyone in here perfect? Raise your hand if there's anyone in here perfect. Well, so if, if there is, we need to have a deliverance service so we can <laughs> cast the lying demon out of you. But no, none of us are perfect. We've made mistakes since we got saved too. But when, when we repent, and take that to the cross in repentance, that sin, it goes to that uninhabited place where no one dwells, and then we don't need to go there and dwell. We don't need to let the accuser of the brethren try to become our conscience and sit, sit on our shoulders and uh, put a, a false guilt. Listen, once we've repented and taken it to the Lord in repentance, uh, it, it's gone, and we don't need to go to that uninhabited place where our sins went and dwell there because, hey, this is the dawn of a new day. Glory to God. Those sins are no longer a part of our lives. Amen. And even the destruction and the waste places that we left behind us with the sins that we've committed, uh, the Lord is able to go back and restore if we'll only believe. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So uh, he was taken from present and judgment. Who will declare his generation? He was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken. So praise God. Those, you know, I was bad. I waited till we made a trip. A few months after I got saved, we made a trip to Israel. And you've heard me share this before, but I was baptized in the Jordan River. That's where I got baptized. And uh, went with a group of Baptists out of Atlanta, Georgia, uh, uh, Charles Stanley's church. was taking a group over there. And Char and I, and, and Brandon, you went with us, didn't you? Yeah, and uh, my, took my parents with me all on a trip to Israel. And I remember when I, they baptized us in the Jordan River, and I looked around me, and I could see little fish and stuff swimming all around me in the Jordan River where we were baptized. But then we made a trip to the Dead Sea, and in the Dead Sea, nothing Nothing lives in the Dead Sea. There's nothing alive in the Dead Sea. But yet the Jordan River flows into the Dead Sea. And I thought on that trip, it just hit me. My sins went to the Dead Sea. <laughs> you know, you know, you know uh, spiritually speaking, my sins went to the Dead Sea never to live again. Amen. Glory to God. Those sins are gone. And when we partake of the Lord's Supper together, for this dawning of a new day, let's put that false guilt behind us. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about if, if the Holy Spirit convicts us of something, then we know what to do, repent and, and, and be forgiven. But, you know, that conviction of the Holy Spirit, with me, it's right here. Ugh. You know, if, if I do something that, you, you know, it's usually pretty soon after it happens, oh, what did I do? That, that, I miss God on that. And, we know what to do when that happens. Repent. 
Send an email to God. <laughs> Tell him we're sorry. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. He's, you can reach him faster than you can put a posting on Facebook. Amen. Tell you, people would quit dragging their dirty laundry out on Facebook and take it to the Lord in prayer and repentance. It'd be a lot, a lot better social media, wouldn't it? Amen. I, I hate to see people drag their dirty laundry out on Facebook. Do y'all... I, I'd rather take it to the Lord in prayer. And if someone else has done something that upsets me, I'd rather just pray for them. Amen. And pray that they would come to repentance. Hallelujah. I just, that just kind of, you know, I've seen people attack people, uh, uh, all kinds of stuff happening on social media that we as believers ought not to uh, get to swimming in that kind of sewer. Amen. Uh, but praise God, our sins have been removed from us as far as the east is from the west. Praise the Lord. And so, with, oh, with the devil though, we were talking about the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You know, it, it's right here. But that accuser of the brethren, he likes to sit on our shoulders and the devil doesn't know when to shut up. If you want to know whether it's he just hammers away, you know, right there, right here between our ears, you know. That's the accuser of the brethren. That's not the conviction of the Holy Spirit when that's happening. Conviction of the Holy Spirit's here. That hammering into our ears over and over. The devil doesn't know when to sh shut up. That's why we need to rebuke him and use the name of Jesus and use our authority as believers and just tell him to shut up in Jesus' name. We have the authority to do that. Jesus said, Behold, I give you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We have the uh, God-given right to do that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's go ahead and pass out. The, we could have the ushers pass out the cups and the bread, and we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper together. And we've talked about several things about this dawning of a new day. I feel really good about this year coming up. Amen. For believers. Amen. <laughs> feel real good about this year for believers. Praise the Lord. If we have any stumbling blocks, I believe as we uh, seek the Lord, He's going to show us any things we need to ask Him to remove in our lives. And when we uh, eat of the bread and drink from the cup, we need to do it as an uh, act of faith and not just a tradition. But this is a tradition that Jesus Himself placed in the church. And so we need to do this as an act of faith, something that's viable. It's something that's alive. Amen. Praise God. If any of us need healing in our bodies, let's chew healing with the molars of faith. By his stripes we were healed. If, if we've been hurt or bruised by others, I've got my... Let, let's let's uh, chew healing with the molars of faith. And we'll take some time here to bow our heads and close our eyes and ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts. We read that in uh, Proverbs chapter 20 how the spirit of the lord he illuminates our hearts he's the the lamp of our our inner being and he will light up the room of our hearts and show us if there's any obstacles in there that we need to remove in jesus name we ask we ask him to show us if there's anything we've done that's been displeasing to him so that we can uh, repent of it and just take it to him as we partake of the Lord's Supper, and then we can just, when we drink from that cup, we'll taste the sweetness of forgiveness with the palate of faith. And also, if we need to forgive others, let's just release. Uh, unforgiveness, it hurts, the, it hurts us. You know, if, if, 
If I have unforgiveness toward someone, then I'm allowing that person to keep me in that prison of hurt and that, that prison of unforgiveness. But when I forgive them, I'm released from that prison. That releases me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord, we just ask you, show us, Lord, whatever it is we need to take to you in the Lord's Supper. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And let's just resolve before we partake. Let's, let's resolve in this dawning of a new day that as we hear from God's Spirit that we will obey. Because if, if we'll uh, make the right choice, He'll supply the right power. Amen. <laughs> He'll supply the right power. Amen. Also, I feel like it in this, this first uh, partaking of the Lord's Supper of this new year, that we should just resolve in what, to walk in love toward everyone, toward our brothers and sisters in Christ, toward those in our family, and even toward our enemies. In Jesus' name. Let's partake of the bread. Praise God. Let's partake of the cup. I'm just going to obey the Holy Spirit. As we were partaking, I, uh, the Holy Spirit gave me a word of knowledge that uh, someone with a problem with their throat area, a discomfort, uh, uh, that you're being healed. Uh, just receive that in Jesus' name. We know that God heals all diseases, but He'll use... Uh, word of knowledge sometimes just to help a person get over into that uh, to get over the threshold into that realm of faith amen and to know they have agreement amen so if that's you just receive that right now So I just know it's an, a problem in the throat area if you're watching by internet just receive that but also believe God for healing of any any affliction, any sickness, any disease. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I always say, do what you can in the natural while you're believing God for the supernatural. That doesn't mean we don't seek medical help. There's, it's not a lack of faith to go to the doctor. It's not a lack of faith to take uh, medicine. But you know, if something's serious enough to go to the doctor, we ought to pray all the more, and we ought to pray for the doctors and pray for... Uh, the pharmacists and pray over me any medicine we take. Faith, well, we ought to involve faith through and through regarding our health, spirit, soul, and body. Amen. I just pray uh, for a year of divine health for this congregation. Not only those here, but the internet congregation as well. Let's just lift our hands and just, Lord, we thank you for divine health in Jesus' name. I, Lord, I thank you that during this year, people that have had chronic ailments are going to be healed during this dawn of a new day in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, the dawn of a new day. Thank you, Lord, for notable uh, healing miracles this year. Lord. Lord, I thank you for giving a hunger to, not only to this church but to churches and believers all over our nation and the world to assemble and pray like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for healing family relationships. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for healing marriages. In the name of Jesus, praise God. Hallelujah. We give you the glory. I, I really feel the presence of the Holy Spirit on this. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Wow.
Praise God. Thank you for a peace, Lord. Lord, I, I thank you for imparting to your church a tangible peace, a tangible peace. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee and on him. And uh, Lord, we determine to keep our hearts and our souls, our minds stayed on you. Thank you for that supernatural, tangible peace that comes only through you. In Jesus' name, amen. If anyone has a word from the Lord, something God's put on their heart, uh, would you like to share, take your liberty? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Did y'all hear that? I'll repeat it so the internet audience. I, I forgive 70 times 7. There's no limit to my forgiveness. And the Hebrews considered 70 times 7 was a phrase that meant without limit. Unlimited. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for obeying the Lord, Judy. Anyone else have something? Diane. Praise the Lord, look at that. She said she came in, wasn't able to even lift her right arm, and now she just lifts it up without any difficulty. When she took the Lord's Supper, she said she received her healing. Let's give Jesus the glory. Who's the healer? Jesus, amen. Who paid the price for our healing? Jesus, amen. Anyone else? That's, thanks for sharing that. Praise God. Well, let's all stand to our feet. and Thank you so much, faithful remnant, for coming out on the first day of the year. You know, you're starting the year off right. I commend you. And I don't condemn those that weren't able to come. I know people have reasons, but I, I want to commend you. And I know we have people watching by Internet, too, who couldn't be here physically. But I commend all of you that participated in this service. Uh, God bless you, and may this be the most wonderful year of your lives so far. I pray that this will be a, a year where God will just, uh, you'll just bubble over with joy over what you see God doing in your lives and in the lives of those around you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Love y'all.